The Titanic's tale begins with an eerie prophecy from the pages of a novel. The book in question was Futility, written by Morgan Robertson, a full 14 years before the Titanic embarked on its ill-fated maiden voyage. The novel narrates the story of an unsinkable ship called the Titan, a vessel of grandeur and magnificence, not unlike the Titanic itself. The Titan, too, met its end in the icy embrace of an iceberg, sinking into the cold depths of the North Atlantic Ocean. The similarities between the fictional Titan and the real-life Titanic are uncannily striking, right down to their identical endings. From the number of lifeboats to the size of the ship, and even the month of the disaster, the parallels seem too numerous to be mere coincidence. Could truth indeed be stranger than fiction? One can only wonder. Among the Titanic's cargo, a silent witness of the tragedy, a 1912 Renault. This elegant automobile, a symbol of the era's opulence and innovation, was owned by the wealthy American businessman, William Carter. He had purchased this luxurious vehicle during a trip to Europe, with the intention of bringing it back home. The car, crated and stored in the ship's cargo hold, embarked on the Titanic's maiden voyage, sharing the ship's fate. William Carter, however, was one of the fortunate survivors of the disaster. His Renault, a shining emblem of early 20th century luxury, was not as lucky. It remains beneath the waves, encased in the depths of the Atlantic, a silent relic of the past. The Renault's story mirrors that of the Titanic itself, a symbol of human ambition and technological prowess, now a haunting artifact of the past, an emblem of luxury, now a haunting artifact of the past. The price of luxury aboard the Titanic was a princely sum. In 1912, the most expensive first-class ticket cost a staggering $4,350. Today, that's equivalent to over $69,000. But this didn't deter the wealthy, eager to experience the opulence on offer. From lavish suites to gourmet meals, the disparity between the classes was stark. It was a world of extravagance, accessible only to those who could afford it. A ticket to opulence bought at a staggering price. The Titanic's final supper was a culinary masterpiece. A symphony of flavor and refinement, it was the last grand meal enjoyed by the ship's first-class passengers before the iceberg struck. Imagine the scene, the dining saloon aglow with sparkling silver and crystal, the murmur of conversation, the clink of fine china. The banquet commenced with oysters and consomme olga, followed by poached salmon with mousseline sauce. As guests savored the flavors, the feast continued with an array of dishes from roast duckling and sirloin of beef to lamb with mint sauce. The piece de resistance, however, was the dessert. Waldorf pudding, peaches and chartreuse jelly, and a choice of chocolate and vanilla eclairs. Each course was paired with the finest wines, rounding out an unforgettable gastronomic experience, a feast fit for royalty, served on the eve of disaster. The iceberg's impact was not the only chilling encounter that night. As the Titanic struck the fatal iceberg, the temperature of the frozen monolith was a numbing 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But the real icy encounter was yet to come. As the ship sank, passengers were plunged into the frigid waters of the Atlantic, colder even than the iceberg itself. The water that night was a bone-chilling 28 degrees Fahrenheit, a temperature at which hypothermia sets in within mere minutes. Imagine the shock of the passengers as they fell into this icy abyss, the biting cold cutting through their clothing and chilling them to the core. The reality of the situation would have set in quickly. They were not just battling against time and the sinking ship, but also against the unrelenting icy grip of the Atlantic, a frigid, unforgiving embrace of the Atlantic, sealing the Titanic's fate. The Titanic's opulence extended to every detail, even the call to dinner. Rather than a simple bell, first-class passengers were summoned to their meals by the harmonious notes of a bugle. The tune they played? None other than the roast beef of Old England. This was no mere mealtime alert, but a melodious reminder of the extravagance that was about to unfold. A symphony of tradition, heralding the opulence that awaited. The night of the Titanic sinking was a dance of deceptive illusions. As the ship sailed into darkness, atmospheric conditions toyed with perception. Recent studies suggest these conditions may have crafted a cruel mirage, distorting the view of the iceberg. Light refracting through cold air could have created a false horizon, masking the looming danger. Imagine a ship of dreams sailing into an illusion, a tragic dance with destiny, a kaleidoscope of illusion, playing a lethal trick on the Titanic. The Titanic had a mere 37 seconds from sighting the iceberg to impact. 
Each tick of the clock carried with it an escalating sense of dread. A crescendo of suspense that would culminate in a collision of monumental proportions. The lookouts straining their eyes against the darkness, the crew racing against time and the iceberg, a silent sentinel in the night. All actors in a drama that would change the course of history. A countdown to disaster, ticking away in the icy silence. Amidst the chaos, one man's fondness for whiskey became a lifesaver. Enter Chief Baker Charles Jugan, who on that fateful night, fortified himself with liquor. As the Titanic met its icy end, Jugan plunged into the freezing Atlantic. But the alcohol coursing through his veins acted as an antifreeze, warding off hypothermia. Against all odds, he survived in the water until dawn, ultimately rescued by a lifeboat. A toast to the unexpected hero, whose spirit proved stronger than the Atlantic's chill. The Titanic was a floating microcosm of society, complete with its own daily newspaper. Dubbed the Atlantic Daily Bulletin, this remarkable publication encapsulated the rhythm of life aboard the illustrious vessel. It featured everything from stock market updates to society gossip, sports news to serialized novels, and even the day's menu. This unique chronicle, published in the heart of the Atlantic, served as a mirror, reflecting the intricate tapestry of life aboard the Titanic, a floating chronicle capturing the essence of the Titanic's final voyage.